My research interest is human face recognition and I'm particularly interested in why some people really struggle to recognise faces and why some others are really excellent at this skill. I'm absolutely fascinated by face recognition and over the last 20 years or so I've met so many people who really struggle with everyday face recognition and that's not just adults um, but also children and some of these people have just failed to develop normal face recognition skills but others have experienced a brain injury or they might have a developmental condition um, which really impacts their ability to recognise faces and our research is really striving to um, work out what's causing these face recognition problems and if we can help these people. So we've worked an awful lot with both adults and children with um, face recognition difficulties and we've been able to offer some of the first face training programmes in the world that um, actually aim to improve face recognition skills. And it's always very exciting, particularly with young children, when we find um, new methods which seem particularly promising to um, be able to, to, to help these children. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, we've also been helping the police in our work with super recognisers. So by identifying people who are really excellent at face recognition, we can actually find people who might be helpful in solving certain crimes or cases. So we're working on a really exciting project at the moment that's funded by the Levy Hume Trust. And this is moving our research beyond in a really new way to not only look at how people um, look at faces they've never seen before, or at faces that they're highly familiar with, so famous people or their family and friends. But what we're interested to see is how one transitions to the other. So how is it we actually learn faces? So when we meet people for the first time, how do we learn to become highly familiar with those people? And why doesn't that happen in some people? So what we want to see is whether people with difficulties in face recognition are actually completely unable to learn new faces or whether it just takes them longer or they need more exposure to new faces than typical people. And at the other end of the spectrum, by studying what we call super recognisers, these people who are really excellent at face recognition, we might actually get some help in working out how we can assist people with face recognition difficulties because we'll be looking at how people learn faces who do this in the most efficient manner in the brain.